Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we're taking a look at the tiny gift box horse and unicorn add-on die set. This die set cuts all the pieces to change your tiny gift box into a horse or a unicorn. Here's a look at all the pieces that this die set has. So you can cut the face of the horse. Here is the piece to cut the legs, so you cut two, one for each side of the box. These little pieces are the hoofs and they layer on the bottom. There's a score line to show you exactly where they go. There are wings for a pegasus or a unicorn. There's a tail that cuts score lines and there's also a tail that cuts the pieces apart so you could have stripes in your tail or your mane. The mane does the same thing. There's a little unicorn horn, there's a nose, and then there's a piece that goes down the bridge of the nose. There's also two hair options as well. There's some little stars or some hearts that you can cut out of the side of the horse or you could just cut pieces to decorate. And there's also some little rosy cheeks. So I'm gonna take these little stars and I'm gonna cut them out of the side for my unicorn. These pieces are cut from some shimmer cardstock, kind of like the little designs that you see on the hind part of a, my little pony. <laughs> So you can see how those little hooves layer right on the bottom of the leg pieces that go on the side. So you can just add a little bit of liquid glue and just add each of those little hooves on the proper side of the legs. This little piece goes down the bridge of the nose of the horse. And then I have a little nose cut here. You can see there's a pink one on the other side that I'm going to use for my unicorn. But I'm just going to glue this and you line up those little openings, the nostrils, with the nostrils cut in the horse's head. These are a little bit smaller, so you're not going to see the piece of cardstock behind it. But that fits perfectly on the bottom of that bridge piece as well. Then there are two different hair options. I like this one for the horse, and then I like the striped one for the unicorn. This one's kind of a more shaggy haired option. And so I'm gonna go ahead and create this horse box since I went ahead and made his face. So I've cut my tiny gift box from some paper bag cardstock, which is the same color cardstock that I used to cut the sides where the legs are and the face. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of double-sided tape to those tabs. So you just need to add tape to the four tabs here. And then you're going to fold these in and attach them to the back sides and create your box. Once your box is all created, now you can start to decorate. So I'm going to go ahead and put the sides that I've already added the little hoofs to on the sides of the box. And you're just going to line these up with the top edge so that the feet come down below. So the box is going to set up off of the tabletop once you get these legs on both sides. Now I can add the face of the horse and I also have a piece of black cardstock that I'm going to layer behind to fill in the eyes and the nose. And then I can just add this to the front of my box. So for the face, you're going to line up the bottom of the face with the edge of the box. So that the ears come past the top. And then I'm going to add the tail. And there's a couple ways you can add the tail. You can add it with the small pointy side going onto the body. Or you could add it with the big side. I ended up adding mine with the large side. So it's kind of poofy at the body of the horse. And then it goes out to a point. And it actually fits rather well in that little thumb notch there. And then it just kind of spills over on the outside of the box. So it just depends on if you want that tail to stick up, you could adhere the pointy side to the thumb notch and have it stick up to like a more poofy tail on the top. 
Now I'm going to create a unicorn box and I've cut the little hooves from some gold glitter cardstock. I'm just adding those to the feet. You can see I've cut those stars out of both pieces and I made sure I did it on opposite sides so that they are both on the back side of the box, kind of like a My Little Pony. So it's on the back side of the horse. I'm going to add a piece of storm cloud cardstock to the back of the face to fill in the eyes and the nose for this one. So now I'm going to work on the mane and the tail of my unicorn. I've got the solid piece that has the score lines as a guide cut from some mermaid cardstock. And then I've just cut three different colors with the dye that separates the pieces so that I can create a little striped mane. I'm going to do the same thing with the tail. So I've cut those three colors from the dye that separates the pieces. I've got the guava, the mermaid, and the peacock cardstock. And then once I have those pieces separated, I can just glue them to that solid piece there that has the score lines as a guide and use those guidelines to place my pieces in the exact placement to get that striped tail. I'm going to go ahead and add this mane to my unicorn and I've cut his face from some white shimmer cardstock and I'm going to not do the part that is the bridge of the nose on this one so you can see the difference between the two looks that you can get. I'm adding a nose cut with some ballet slipper cardstock. And then I'm going to add his little horn to the back side. You could also add it to the front so it looks like it's coming out of the hair. And I've cut that with some gold glitter cardstock to match the hooves that I did on the, on the sides for the feet. So I'm adding the sides to my box. And you could layer a piece of colored cardstock behind these little stars that I cut out. But what I did was I actually cut out the stars with coordinating um, cardstocks in the colors of the mane and I'm just going to drop those little stars into those negative spaces that I cut out of the white cardstock. So this is a fun way to have multiple colors in these little designs that comes with the dye. So I'm going to add the little rosy cheeks to the front of my unicorn here just with a little dot of glue and picking those up with my embellishment wand. And then before I put the face onto the box, I'm gonna add the little wings that the die cuts. So you can have the wings or not, it just depends on the design you want. So this is a Pegasus and a unicorn together. And once those wings are in place, then I can just add the whole panel that I made to the front of the box. Now I'm going to add that tail that I created and for this one I'm going to make the tail go down and I'm just adding it to the back of the box. But I'm making sure that I leave enough room to grab that lid through that little thumb notch. So I'm using liquid glue so I can kind of shift it around and get it in the right placement. And then here's a look at both those cute little boxes, the horse and the unicorn, together. I just love that you have options to make whatever kind of box that you want. Now I'm going to make some cards using this same die. So I've cut my unicorn face from some pink shimmer cardstock. I've added some narwhal behind it just for a softer gray for the eyes. I'm using some fog cardstock for the bridge of the nose. And then I actually made the nose out of some shimmery aqua cardstock. I've colored his mane to match and I've cut the horn from some silver glitter cardstock. Now I'm going to do the same with the tail, but I thought it would be fun to add a stripe of some silver glitter. So that center stripe I've cut from that same glitter cardstock to match the horn. And it's just going to tuck behind there. I'm also creating a rainbow with that stitched rainbow die. So I've cut the base from white and then I've cut all the arches from various colors of cardstock to create my rainbow. I've cut the puffy cloud 
portrait backdrop from some white cardstock and I'm just figuring out the placement of my rainbow and my unicorn that I'm going to tuck behind these clouds. I thought that the clouds were a little plain, just white, so I decided to add some inking through the starry background stencil. So I've just got that taped onto my cloudy background that I cut and I'm adding some sponge sugar very lightly through that stencil to add some design to those clouds. I'm going to take it and shift it around and I'm going to add some yellow as well with some squeezed lemonade ink. And then I'm actually going to take it off and shift it one more time, making sure those stars don't line up with each other. And I'm going to add some tumbled glass. So I basically created my own custom pattern paper with a stencil. Now I'm going to tuck that rainbow in there and I'm going to glue it on the backside so that it stays in the placement that I want. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue behind those sides that are tucked on the back. And this will just hold it in place as I continue to create my card. I'm going to do the same thing with my unicorn. I'm going to go ahead and put him in his placement tucked behind those clouds. And I'm going to add his tail. So this time when I added the tail, I added it with the puppy side out. So you can see how you get a slightly different look depending on which way you turn the tail. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this whole thing to a card base. So I have a sentiment from the Unicorn Picnic stamp set and I'm just stamping that on a little banner cut from some mermaid cardstock. I'm going to trim that off. This little banner is going to come from the left side of the card. I'm also going to layer a smaller banner cut from some peacock cardstock behind it. So I'm just going to go ahead and adhere that banner that it's going to go behind to my background. And then I can layer this larger one on top. I'm going to use some thin foam squares so it pops up slightly from the background and has some dimension between those two banners. Then I can just trim off the excess of that banner that's on the back. I also die cut some stars from some silver glitter cardstock and I'm just adding those around. I felt like it just needed a little something more and a pink frame to pull in that pink color from the rainbow really made it pop a little bit more. So what I did was I pulled up the edge of that banner where that foam square was and I'm just going to tuck the frame behind it and have that banner overlap it on the front. So I've just added some liquid glue to my frame and then I'll just slide it underneath that banner and it will overlap. And it just looks like I always meant to do it this way. <laughs> so here is that finished card with that cute little unicorn. And look how shimmery it is out of that shimmer cardstock. Now I'm going to create a card with the horse. So I thought it would be fun to make a farm card. And I've got a piece of white cardstock here that's cut to the size of a card front, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to use the fence border. And I've got a barn that's from Critters on the Farm. I've already colored it and cut it out. I did not use the dye to cut it out because I didn't want the white border. I just fussy cut it. And I'm just using the barn and my horse that's cut from some paper bag cardstock as placement to figure out where I want to cut this picket fence border. So once I have it placed where I want it, I'll just hold it in place with a little piece of tape and run that through my die cut machine. Then I'm going to do some inking. So instead of having a bunch of layers of cardstock, I'm going to create some layers using my stencils and some ink. So I'm going to use the hillside stencil you see there, and I'm going to use it as a mask to protect my fence so it will remain white. And the curve of this stencil matches up perfectly with the curve of this die. So once I've got that in place, I'm going to use my blending brush and I'm going to add some scattered straw ink. 
So you can see that this is just going to color the ground and I'm coloring it yellow like hay. And then my fence that is being masked off by the stencil will remain nice and white. So I'm gonna make sure that I have the whole thing colored with a light layer of the scattered straw. But I'm gonna do some more stenciling with the grass stencil. So the grass stencil matches the same curve and I'm gonna use the masking side of it as well so it's protecting my fence. And then I'm gonna go in with that same scattered straw as well as some fossilized amber, which is a little bit darker, and create the look of some grass. I'm gonna do one more layer of this so it creates a nice pattern texture without all the bulk of layers of cardstock. And you get different variation in the color as well. I'm gonna add some foam tape to the back of this whole piece and I'm putting it on a die cut panel from some spiffy speckle paper and this is going to act as my sky. So now I can assemble my little horse that's gonna go on here. I'm adding some black cardstock to the back of his face to fill in the eyes and the nose. I cut the bridge detail for his nose from some craft cardstock. So it has a lighter color than that paper bag, it has a nice contrast, but still a brown horse. I cut the nose and the hair and the tail from some chocolate bar cardstock. And it does help if you put the nose right side up. <laughs> it was upside down the first time I stuck it on there. And then I'm gonna add the barn to the top of my little hill here. And then I can add my horse and I'm gonna pop it up on some foam so it's a little bit more in the foreground than the barn. And then I'm just gonna add the tail tucked right behind it. And now I can add my sentiment. So I used Oliver's ABCs to cut out some red pattern paper from the Really Rainbow Collection to say, hey, H-A-Y, because it's a horse and we're all about our puns, right? And then I'm going to use Smitty's ABCs to spell out the word there. But I'm actually not gonna line them up straight on my block like I would normally do. I'm gonna make them a little more fun and haphazard so they match the word hay, which is kind of mimicking the curve of the fence and the grass down there. And I only have one capital E, so you can see i am left a space for it, and I'm just going to stamp that. And then I can glue down my die cut letters. Once I have all these letters glued down, then my card is all finished. And I just love the fun look of this card with that horse and that bright red barn. And I love the inking below. Now let's take a look at some more examples from the design team. Elise created this beautiful stack of unicorn boxes and I love the shimmery striped manes that she added. Elena got really clever and changed the horse into a pig, which I just think is super fun. So there are lots of ideas and variations you can do with this die. Grace created this super sweet slimline card using the unicorn and also the cupcake. Audrey also used the die to create a pig box. I love that curly tail and I also love those googly eyes on the front. It's just too cute. And then Megan created this fun slimline lift the flap card where she added the chicks. And then under each of the little flaps, she has a different character. So she also created a horse, a pig, and then also created a cow from the same die. Lots of possibilities. And then here is a glitter unicorn that Yaine created. I love the way she colored the mane and the tail and also that cute little sentiment sticking out on a piece of acetate. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.